You hear me well? Yeah, look so. Let's start uh, this talk about uh, warehousing. So my name is Jacques Etienne Baudou. Uh, I do Odoo project for now a very, very long time. I'm one of the early <laughs> adopters of Odoo. Uh, the last uh, years, I work really a lot on a logistic project for managing a major warehouse in Europe. And uh, I work for that a lot uh, with Camp to Camp the, the last years. And uh, we collaborated uh, now since uh, many years together. I will talk about uh, three concepts during this talk regarding how you can manage the work inside the warehouse. So. I will come with the basics. You know, when you place an order, a sale order in Odoo, you confirm the order that generates operations. The operations are based on the route, uh, which is coming from your configuration on the warehouse. So in standard, you can choose one step, two steps, three steps, so pick, pack, ship. And those operations, so the stock picking, they are classified in what we call uh, operation types, uh, so the st stock picking type. And uh, in Odoo, it's very basic. You have one configuration you set on your warehouse, and that's it. Uh, so in real life, it's a lot more complicated than that. And we, have a, we need more advanced uh, solution to be able to manage uh, how to classify each operation in your warehouse. As I said, I've divided this in three concepts we have uh, put in the OCA. The f it's picture with different color. So the one on the right is about releasing operation in the warehouse. In the middle is how is your flow in the warehouse from the stock until uh, the carrier, so the company shipping the goods. And then the first uh, on the left is about how to take the goods in the warehouse, where you collect the goods in the warehouse. Let me first try, uh, let me first uh, talk about the one in the middle. And uh, will you explain that? I go back to my. <laughs> so let's uh, allow me to. Uh, yeah, give some uh, real example. I have a customer, he ordered this box. What you need to do, you take the box from the stock, for example, you put a label and it's ready to be shipped. For example, let's imagine I want to ship that with DHL uh, because this is a small parcel, it's typically something you can deliver with DHL. You pick, you put a label and it's done. Then, uh, we may ask ourselves if I have uh, 10 customers ordering the same box, do I need to pick 10 times this box? Huh? Separate by customer. It's maybe annoying. You can take 10 boxes from the stock, no matter from which customer. You have a pile of box. You go to the labeling station and you label the box after each other. That's a very simple example. Let's complicate it a bit. I have a customer ordering two bucks. What do I want to do with two bucks? I want to be efficient in the cost. So I don't want to make two parcels with the box. I don't want to pay twice the transporter. I will take two bucks. I will go to a strapping station. I will put some strap and I will create a bundle of two bucks. I will pay only once the delivery cost. That's a different way of working. Now, I have a different customer. He don't want the box. He want just one piece. Yeah, I, I took it from uh, <laughs> the OCA. So if, oops, if I pick this from the box, and this is in my stock, what I need to do with that, I need to pack it. So now I need to go to a packing station. And at the packing station, I will take an empty box, I will put this in the box, and then I will place that for shipping. And this is valid if you have multiple products. Or maybe, let's say, 
I have plenty of customers ordering only one piece because most of my sales is just one piece. Do again, I need to care about who is ordering. No, you can pick all the pieces in your trolley, in your roller cage, or in a pallet. You don't mind. You don't mind about who is ordering. So, what is important to understand in my illustration is that the strategy on how you work in your warehouse for collecting the goods from your stock, packing, shipping, or even extra step. Maybe I want four step. Could be. Maybe I will collect plenty of goods from my stock, bring it to one location. I will sort them, uh, like a, maybe a pigeon hole, and then uh, I will uh, then uh, pack them by customer, and then I will ship it. And when you, we ship, when we talk about a DHL, we ship nothing. We just put a label. Nobody's shipping something. A DHL is coming and collecting the box. That's for my small customer. Then, I don't know, I only have small customer, I also have big customer. And the big customer, they don't want just a box. They want plenty of goods. And for them, I will set up pallets. I will stack all the product they want on the pallet. And it's a different story because I'm not using the same place in my warehouse to build the parcel or for building a pallet. When I build a pallet, maybe I have 10 pallets I need to ship to a customer. What is important now is that I need to manage how I will load the truck because the pallet will go in a truck and if I have to ship 10 pallets to my customer, I need to have the 10 pallets in the truck and not one pallet or two pallets or nine pallets. The 10 or nothing has to go in the truck. So in this case, the ship operation really matters. You need to ensure what you put in the truck. So, long illustration. <laughs> this is a small uh, extract of a real life example. I gave you some uh, explanation. This is representing, so on the far uh, left you have the stock. It could go to consolidation, to packing zone, to an output, and then to the customer, and you see that we have classified all those operations because it's going to different locations in the warehouse, it's using different machine, it's using different operator, and uh, each step is going inside a picking type in Odoo, classifying what is the type of operation we are doing. And now you understand that just configuring pick back ship on your warehouse is not enough to achieve this. So what we have uh, created is a module called Stock Warehouse Flow. It's available in 14, and it allows you to give some rules. So like uh, on the warehouse, I will just show you, based on information that is quite static. So my carrier, I know it. My product, I know if my product is in a carton. I know if it's prepackaged. I know maybe if I strap it or not. Uh, maybe on the content of the order. So all information, you have it on your hand when the sale order is placed. And you can decide what is the best strategy to bring the goods to uh, the, what we call customer location, so to have the goods outside your warehouse. Uh, how does it look in Odoo? Do we do we have it ah, here? So we have a new uh, model called routing flows. It looks quite similar to uh, what you have on a warehouse. And you can create a new flow. Let's say I want to have a DHL uh, prepackaged flow for one of my warehouse. And the principle is that in standard, when you confirm a sale order, it's generating a delivery order. That's the last step. You always get this information. Maybe I want this for DHL. And you can now choose how many steps you want for this flow. One, two, three, and after that, it's still generating a route, so you can still adapt the route and uh, make it more complicated. Let's say I want a two-step operation and you click Generate the route. 
of course, maybe sometimes you don't want uh, a flow just for a carrier. Here in this case, I said it's prepackaged, so maybe I want to add a domain on my move saying that this is prepackaged. So if the product I'm delivering is prepackaged, I know I want to apply this flow. So here we have the condition of applicability of the flow, and then we have the result, which is the root. Just cancel this. When you generate the root, it will uh, looks to this, so it's generating a root with the steps. Behind the scene, it's quite easy to understand because it's using a concept existing in Odoo. How Odoo is working when it's pulling a flow, it's always looking at the location. So the last step is the delivery, so going from the output to the customer, and based on what is my output location, it will pull a rule which is defined on this location. So what we are doing with this uh, system, the trick is that we replace the output location based on the condition of applicability, and by replacing that, Odoo will pull the right stuff. You can also, uh, if you want, define some procurement group, that's everything you can do in standard. Like I said, the example of, I don't want to care about the order, so the procurement group in standard Odoo, it's always my sale order. But if you don't care about the order, you could say a give a fixed procurement group, and then you will just have one picking for everybody instead of picking one piece after each other for each customer. Um, I'll give you a small demo. Let's take this one. So I have an order with DPD. I will duplicate one, I confirm it. One thing I will talk uh, just afterwards is regarding uh, the release of operation. I just do it for now. And what happened is my uh, delivery, so my uh, yeah, complete delivery flow has been classified automatically according to one of the flow I've defined. And here, because it was a DPD prepackaged package, so just this box, the system decided, okay, this is this flow to apply. It's a two-step operation. One person pick and one person stick the label on it. Okay, so that was the first concept I wanted to introduce. The next one, uh, you saw it a little bit when I clicked on the release button. What is important to understand is that in Odoo Standard, when you place your order, you generate the picking operation and that books your stock. And usually, you want to declare the fact that someone uh, confirm an order and the fact that you book your stock at the same time. You want to control when your stock will be fully, uh, really reserved in uh, your stock. And uh, this is done by the concept of release of operation, meaning that every order, sale order that is confirmed is only creating the last step, the ship operation. And this is waiting an action that you will then manage globally on your warehouse based on many conditions. And uh, I will give you some example of condition. Typically, let's imagine I have a big customer ordering 10 pallets of a product. In Odoo, this will book my 10 pallets in my stock. And then I have another customer ordering one piece. What do I need in Odoo? I need 10 pallets plus one piece to be able to serve the customer that needs just a single piece. That's why you need to control when you want to make the reservation, because maybe I want in the morning to ship the customer willing one piece, and in the afternoon I will do the biggest customer where I will ship all the pallets. And this is why we introduce the concept, I uh, will go back to the presentation. Up. The release of the output operation that allows you to still also uh, see who 
placed an order before what, before who. So we still keep the FIFO principle, huh? the first person that order is the first one that it will be served. If I take back uh, my example, let's take this one. I place an order, I confirm the order. You see that only the delivery step is there. It's waiting to be released. This is what the module allows you to say in the root what is have to be blocked at the waiting stage. You can see all the moves. You have also a view with all the allocations. So you see everything that you need to output from your warehouse. And then you can group them. You can classify them. You can have a, some advanced dashboard to allow you to choose which one will be delivered after, uh, before the other one. And we see a demand. We see a priority date based on when the order was placed. And how much is available. And this is based on how much I have in stock and based on all the order still waiting to be delivered. And that's what we call the virtual reservation. So all the reservation to serve the right customer in the right order is done now on the shipping. And by changing this vision, this completely changed the way you look at your logistics. Because now it means that what you decide to place as operation inside your warehouse, you know you have the stock. Because you know, do if I have five, five pieces in stock, I make an order for seven, I will place a picking for seven pieces. But I know I have only five. What happened? I generate a back order. I generate a back order in the pick. I generate a back order in the pack. I generate a back order in the ship. But since the beginning, I know I have only five for this customer. With this concept, when you release the goods, you release only for the stock you have, meaning you never have back order for your internal operation. You really decrease the amount of operation. You create only the one you need to execute. That was the <laughs> second concept. Uh, Last but not least. <laughs> so now we control when we release the operation. We control which step we create for bringing the goods to the end of my warehouse, ready to load in the truck. Now I need to care what will I take in my stock, where will I uh, collect the goods. And this is what uh, allows what this module allows you to do, the dynamic routing. It's a module uh, that we did some years uh, now. It's combined for oh, everything related to uh, customer deliveries to reservation. So typically, you want to create some reservation rules in your stock, deciding where you can book the stock. So maybe I've some stock below, it's easily pickable. And this a forklift driver or whatever person working in the warehouse can take the goods. And this is fine when I just sell one box and this box is there. I could have this box five meter high, 10 meter, 15 meter high. It's not the guy working that will pick the box over there. You need a different type of operation because this is a strategy where you need a different machine a different operator. And then you need to introduce some reservation rule based on should I reserve one box downstairs or should I reserve one box above? Maybe it's a lot more convenient to reserve the box downstairs. And when you will go above, you will prefer to take them when it's a full pallet. Because if you sell a pallet, you don't want to take a pallet from upstairs, bring it down for the replenishment, and then pick again from downstairs, from down back to the customer. You just uh, lose one step in your operation, and uh, it's not efficient. And uh, maybe, if I take this example, you have the box on shelving. 
could be you have an, have the pieces, the single pieces, in a vertical lift a machine uh, where you have plenty of small stuff there, and you know that uh, if I sell just this, I don't want to go upon a box. Uh, this, is the, this is the box I want to sell, and then uh, I have a different rule for picking the goods. So, with the mechanism of stock reservation, you can give different uh, strategy on where you want to collect the goods. And when you have decided that, with the dynamic routing, we can replace the picking operation. So what we just quickly, very briefly saw before is that we place the pick, pack, ship, uh, eventual pack operation uh, with the routing flow. We know that there is always a peak operation starting, and this peak operation is already pre-classified based on the carrier, on the type of product. So everything's static, and now this is based on where is my stock. And you want to reclassify this based on the stock information. And for that, uh, the dynamic routing, what it is doing, it's launching the reservation, the standard reservation of Odoo. It's looking where is the stock based on the location where he found the product he will convert the operation to a new one. So if I take an example, uh, so we were talking uh, about uh, DPD prepackaged. I think that's the example uh, we took uh, just before. <laughs> So here I listed different place in my warehouse. So here my internal location with the pallet, an internal location for the shelving. And here it's a location uh, more difficult to uh, access, which is the overstock. And everything is inside my stock. So when you place a picking, it can book everywhere in my stock because this is all the stock I am able to ship. And the only thing I don't want to place there is the stuff in quarantine, the stuff that I have scrapped. But uh, otherwise, everything is inside the stock. And the decision on where to book the stock will be based on my reservation rule. And the dynamic routing here allows you to introduce, and you have a little story coming with the module to nicely explain you what's going uh, there. So if you find some stock at this location, for this operation type, then I ask the system to modify my operation type here and classify DPD prepackaged to a pick prepackaged pallet internal. And you give all your rules like that based on where is your stock, and you get the right operation. And then this type of operation is for one type of operator, the one collecting the pallet is for another type of operator. This module also allows you to add extra step. So what we saw is that in the routing flow, it's taking from your stock to the customer. Here we are on the picking, and on the picking, maybe I cannot directly go to, uh, to my uh, next location. Sometimes I need more step, multiple step to uh, reach the right location. And this also is possible to, with the dynamic routing. For example, let's say I need to collect some pallets in the hall three, it's far, far away. And you have a machine taking the pallet from the rack, bringing the pallet, the pallet to a buffer location, and then someone else will go to the buffer location, pick the pallet, and bring that to the right place. So all the insertion of uh, extra step is based on the location destination you configure in the replacement of the operation type. So if the destination match the one from your initial uh, situation, it's one step. If it's not matching, then it means that there is one step additional uh, to reach that destination. And then in the picture, I also <coughs> Uh, so it's valid for the input, and this is not only for shipping the goods, the dynamic routing, you can also base that for the, your putaway. So 
So we have the stock storage type module that allows you to configure a very advanced way to uh, put away your goods. And now you have this feature available in standard in the 16, but not as advanced as the one in the OCA. So this will still uh, continue to exist. And with the storage type, you can give some uh, classification on your product, on the product itself, or on even of each of their packaging, and say that when I receive the box from my supplier, this has to go to the shelving. If I receive a pallet, this has to go to the pallet truck. And again, it's the same. How do I get there? I am in the input. Huh? The truck just unloaded my goods at the input. And I need different strategy to reach the right location in my stock. And this is how we also classify all the operation with the dynamic coating based on uh, where you want to go. That was very quick. <laughs> A lot of information. And uh, I'm stopping here. There is plenty of things uh, uh, interesting and behind the scene, of course, uh, for uh, being able to compute this. But that was uh, what I wanted to share with you with what we have done lastly in the OCA on mainly the WMS uh, repository. I just want to add one thing is that I was talking about a strategy to execute the operation. Behind those strategy, we have the shop floor uh, mobile application that Simone will, uh, after me, talk about. Uh, I don't know if it's just after or a few talk later. And uh, in this, we introduce specific scenario of execution. So that's why also it's important to uh, define specific operation type, because bound to an operation type, we have a scenario. And the person executing that has one way, a single way of doing his job. He cannot escape from doing that. He cannot uh, invent a different process. And uh, that's why with all this stack you find in the WMS you now, we are able since uh, some years to tackle very large project doing a major uh, warehousing operation. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>
warehousing is very similar, but uh, the strategy on what is your key point in your company could differ a lot in the how you you about the how you, you yeah how you see the the approach. Other question? Yeah. Uh, so, what it is doing, it's placing picking. Then, how you execute the picking, it's left to you. You can use the standard barcode of Odoo, or you can use the OCA barcode. Uh, that's just the step after. So, here we create all the step, all the operation, and then how you do them by paper, by barcode, uh, by Odoo barcode, or whatever barcode, it's up to you. But it's it's uh, it's there, so it's classified, which is made, which makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And uh, since uh, the version fourteen, there's a contracting report that will be added, and you know the the feature uh, for the forecast from the sales and purchase app. Um, the release operation does it. Um, does it manage well with the forecasting? Or yes, I think so. Yes. Yeah. You about it? So, okay. The only thing we have not managed so far is uh, integrating with manufacturing because that's a lot more complicated. Uh, but uh, we are thinking about uh, this topic uh, for improving this. Yeah. By integrating with manufacturing, do you mean anything that has like a total materials breakdown? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Last question. Sorry, it's just possible. Um, uh, usually, the design of the model is done by uh, developer availability logics and work rate. However, uh, we found that. Uh, in the, in the context of a warehouse that is uh, a company that faces scarcity of goods and that needs to, to reserve products up front for customers, that um, you are not really making use of a stock reservation up front because you are delaying. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm doing a virtual reservation, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so then you, um, uh, we were thinking, we kind of need that the concept of so today the who gets the product first is based on uh, when the order was placed uh, basically that's the could be the confirmation of the order I mean it's just a priority date, so you could enhance that and define some different rule on who, what is defining the priority. Uh, but what is also important is, you talk about scarcity, for example, uh, I have a customer, he's telling me I'm on holiday for one week. I don't need to book to reserve my stock for him for one week. I know the product will come or it can stay on overstock. I don't need to have that on the picking location for one week, knowing that uh, Anyway, uh, I should definitely not hand over it to a transporter. He will bring that to his door and the, the guy is not open. Or same, sometimes you have a big customer and they tell you, I want the truck only to arrive on Friday. But he's placing the order on the Monday. The order comes in on the Monday. You don't want to book your stock on Monday for a customer that you know you will deliver on Friday. So that's all important point to take into account from the real life uh, we are facing. With the billing system, can you uh, generate a purchase order from the, the from delivery order? Yes. Yes, but it's all a matter of uh, what is the location you monitor. So it's a uh, 
you need to, to put uh, your warehouse as a monitored location, not your stock. And then based on that, uh, the system knows that there is an output move and creates a need. I see I've taken five minutes from the next one. Sorry, so I will leave the place. <laughs> Thank you.